Stephen Fry reads from a limited edition of World Tales by Idris Shah, the sales of which go entirely to ISF's Books for Afghan Children project, bringing stories to kids in Afghanistan, Tom Tit Tot by Idris Shah. Tom Tit Tot The power resident in a person's name is a feature of folklore in widely dispersed cultures. It is very likely that this native version of the imp and his secret name was current in the British Isles for many centuries before it was driven out by the Grimm brothers' exportation of the German form, now better known in Anglo-Saxon countries as Rumpelstiltskin. The secret name, and the forfeit which has to be given if it cannot be discovered, is widely reflected in folk tales. There is a cognate of Tom Tit Tot in southern Nigeria, the hippopotamus called Isantim. The tale is found in places as far apart as Iceland and Italy, Mongolia and Sweden. In Cornwall, the secret name is Terry Top. In Scotland, Whoopity Sturry. In France, Rigdin Rigdon. And in Magia, Dancing Vargolushka. This English version taken down from the words of an East Anglian woman a century ago, is beautifully told. The folklorist Joseph Jacobs thought it far superior to any of the continental variants. Once upon a time, there was a woman who had baked five pies. When they came from the oven, they had been so overbaked that their crusts were too hard to eat. So the lady said to her daughter, Maiden, you just put those pies on the shelf and leave them there, and the pastry will get soft. But she didn't say, they'll get soft, really. She said in the way they have in East Anglia, they'll come again, meaning the same thing. But the girl, hearing these words, said to herself, well, if they'll come again, I'll eat them now. And she sat down and there and then ate them all up. When it was time for supper, the woman said to the girl, Go and get one of those pies. I expect they've come again now. The girl went and she looked, and there was nothing there but the pie dishes. So she went back to her mother and said, No, they haven't come again. Not one of them? asked the mother. Not one of them, she said. Well, whether they've come again or not come again, said the mother, I'll have one for my supper. But you can't if they haven't come, said the girl. But I can, said she. Go and bring the best of them. Best or worst, said the girl. I've eaten them all and you can't have one until it has come again. Well, the woman was really angry and she took her spinning to the door to spin. And as she spun, she sang, My daughter has eaten five, five pies today. My daughter has eaten five, five pies today. The king was coming down the street, and he heard her singing, but he could not make out the words, so he stopped, and he said, What was that you were singing about, mother? The woman was ashamed to let him know what her daughter had done, so she sang, instead of that, my daughter has spun five, five skeins today. My daughter has spun five, five skeins today. Well, said the king, I never heard of anyone who could do that. Then he said, look here, I want a wife and I'll marry your daughter. But take note, eleven months of the year she shall have all the food she likes to eat and all the gowns she wants to wear and all the company she cares to have. But... The last month of the year she'll have to spin five skeins every day. And if she does not, I'll kill her. All right, said the woman, for she was thinking what a fine marriage that would be. And as for those five skeins, well, there would be plenty of ways of getting out of that. Most likely he'd forget about it. And so they were married. And for eleven months the girl had all the food she wished and all the dresses she desired and all the company she wanted. But when the time was ending, she began to think about those skeins, and she wondered whether the king still had them in mind. 
but not one word did he say about them, and she thought that he must have forgotten the whole matter. However, on the last day of the last month of the eleven, he took her into a room which she had never seen before. There was nothing in it but a spinning wheel and a stool. Now, my dear, you will be shut in here tomorrow with some food and some flax, and if you haven't spun five skeins by nightfall, your head will come off. And away he went about his business. Well, she was very frightened indeed. She had always been a useless girl, so much so that she did not even know how to spin. What was she to do tomorrow with nobody to help her? She sat down on a stool in the kitchen, and how she cried. Then she suddenly heard a hard kind of knocking on the door. She jumped up and opened it, and what did she see but a small black thing with a long tail who looked at her strangely and said, What are you a-crying for? <laughs> What's that to you? she asked. Never you mind, he said. But tell me what you're crying for. It won't do me any good if I do, said she. You don't know that, said the visitor, and its tail twirled around. Well, she said, it won't do any harm, even if it does no good. And she told him all about the pies and the skeins and everything. This is what I'll do, said the little black thing. I'll come to your window in the morning and take the flax and bring it spun at night. What would you charge? she asked. It looked out of the corner of its eye and said, I'll give you three chances every night to guess my name. And if you haven't guessed it before the month is up, you shall be mine. Well, she thought, she'd be sure to guess the name before the month was up. All right, said she, and how the thing twisted its tail with delight. Well, the next day the husband took her into the room, and there was the flax and the day's food. Now, there's the flax, said he, and if you haven't spun it by night, off goes your head. And then he went out and locked the door. He had hardly gone when there was a knocking on the window. She leapt up and opened it, and there, sure enough, was the little old thing sitting on the ledge. Where's the flax? he said. Here it is, she said, and she handed it over. Well, when evening came, there was a rapping on the window again. She got up and opened it. And there was the little old thing, with five skeins of flax on his arm. Here it is, he said, and he gave it to her. Now, what's my name? Is it Bill? she asked. No, it is not, he said, and he twirled his tail. Is it Ned? No, it is not and he twirled his tail. Well, is it Mark? No, it is not, and he twirled his tail harder, and away he flew. Well, when her husband came in, there were the five skeins, ready for him. Oh, I see I shan't have to kill you tonight, my dear, said he. You'll have your food and flax in the morning, and away he went. After that, the flax and food were brought, and every day the little black imp came, morning and evening, and all day the maiden was sitting thinking of names to say when he came at night. But she never lit on the right one, and as the days approached the end of the month, the imp began to look really malicious and twirled his tail faster every time she made a guess. At last it came to the last day but one. The imp came that night with the usual five skeins and said, What 
Haven't you got my name yet? Is it Nicodemus? she asked. No, it is not, he said. Is it Samuel? she wanted to know. No, it is not, said he. Well then, is it Methuselah? No, it is not that either, he said. And he looked at her like a fiery coal and said, Woman, there's only tomorrow night. Then you'll be mine. And away he flew. Well, she really did feel horrid. But then she heard the king coming along the corridor. In he came, and when he saw the five skeins, he said, Well, my dear, I can see that you'll have your skeins tomorrow night as well, and as I reckon I shan't have to kill you, I'll have supper in here tonight. So supper was brought, and another stool for him, and down the two sat to eat. Well, the king had not had more than about a mouthful when he stopped and began to laugh. What is it? she asked. <laughs> because, he said, I, I was out uh, hunting today and I got to a place in the wood which I hadn't seen before and, and there was an old chalk pit and a sort of humming sound. So I got off my horse and went very quietly to the pit and I looked down. Well, what should be there but the funniest little black thing you should ever see and what was it doing but spinning wonderfully fast with a little spinning wheel and twirling its tail and as it spun it sang nimmy nimmy not my name's tom tit tot well when the maiden heard this, she felt as if she, she could have jumped out of her skin for joy, but she didn't say a word. Next day, the little thing looked really nasty when he came for the flax. And when night fell, the girl heard that tapping again on the window pane. She opened the window and the imp came right in on the ledge. It was grinning from ear to ear, and how its tail was twirling. What's my name? it asked, as it gave her the skeins. Is it Solomon? she said, pretending to be afraid. No, it is not. As he said that, he came further into the room. Well, is it Zebedee? she said. No, it is not. And then it laughed and twirled its tail until you could hardly see it. Take time, woman, it said, for there is one more guess and you're mine. And it stretched out its black hands at her. She backed away a step or two and she looked at it. And then she laughed out loud, and she said, pointing a finger at it, Nimmy, Nimmy, not, your name's Tom Tit Tot. When he heard that, he gave an awful shriek and flew into the dark, and she never saw him ever again.